put on the mute. Uh, and you can uh, actually post your queries in the chat box. And those who are on the uh, live streaming on YouTube, so they can uh, put their questions in a uh, chat box there. Okay, so uh, we'll be starting. So shall I start? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, all. Dear participant, a very warm welcome. On the auspicious occasion of Engineers Day, I welcome you all for the expert lecture on engineering innovations for highways and airport organized by Department of Civil Engineering, Srihangar College of Engineering, Pune, in association with Appa Patwadan Safai Va Paryavaran Tantraniketan Dehugao, Pune, uh, NGO working in the field of sanitation, health, hygiene, and integrated waste management founded by Padmashri, late Dr. S.V. Mapuskar. Uh, on the behalf of organizers, I request uh, HOD sir, uh, Dr. S.S. Shastri sir, to welcome the audience and dignitaries. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Aswar. It is really a proud privilege and honor for me to welcome our speaker, Dr. Vijay Zoshi, who has joined this particular meeting from Sydney, Australia. So he is ahead of time, both by birth, he is very senior to us, and he is in Australia. So that there also he is ahead of time. And you will see the innovations that he has done. That also will prove that he is ahead of time. So on this occasion of uh, Engineers Day, I would just like to quote what Hendry Petrovsky has quoted. Science is about knowing and engineering is about doing. So yes, particularly we as civil engineers, we create you know lot of things. We construct a lot of things. And at the same time, I'm always being an environmental engineer. I'm all engineer. I'm always uh, worried about the kind of load that we put on environment. And perhaps today's lecture or today's speaker is the right person who will guide us, who will teach us or how to use the waste. There, actually speaking, there is nothing waste in this world. It is the way, it is our perception, how, how we look at one uh, all the things. And with this particular thing in mind and uh, with uh, say great regards to our great civil engineer in India, that is Sir M. Visveswaraya, we are celebrating this Engineers' Day. Before I uh, introduce our students uh, about the Engineers' Day, I would like to uh, just uh, give some few glimpses of our uh, institute, that is Sihangad College of Engineering. Our co Sihangad College of Engineering is under the umbrella of, under the aegis of Sihangad Technical Education Society, which was founded in the year 1993. And our college, engineering college, started working in the year 96. And civil department started in the year 2000. And at that time, we had a very meager in, uh, intake of 30 students. Now, today, we have an intake of 180 students and uh, two uh, post-graduation courses, as well as our department is also known as research center. So by leaps and bounds, we have increased many folds. So, uh, So, so uh, with this particular background now, I would just like to introduce uh, our young budding engineers to this Engineers Day. Why we celebrate Engineers Day? As I said, it is celebrated in the fond memory of the legendary civil engineer in India, that is Sir M. Vishweswaraya. Just to give you brief glimpses, because nowadays everything is available on Google, I would request the students to just Google it out and see what the work uh, Sir Visveswaraya has done and what is there ahead of us as civil engineers. So uh, Sir Visveswaraya has linkage with Pune because he has graduated from COEP and he was born on 15 September 1860. And after graduating from COEP, he worked on many prestigious assignments due to just positive of time. And I want to uh, give more time to our speaker and I'm also eager to listen to him. So I will be just cut shorting the information about Sir Visveswaraya because actually that information itself will take you know an hour or so. So uh, after graduation, he worked on many prestigious assignments like the PWD of the then Bombay uh, region, then Indian Indi uh, Indian Irrigation Commission. Uh, the peculiarity of his work is he's designed very intricate irrigation systems, uh, and in one of the challenging uh, areas of Deccan Plateau, our Students, you are exposed to geology also, engineering geology. 
so you know what are the difficulties in deccan plateau then uh, he design an automated spillway flood gates and he installed them for the first time in khadakwasla dam in 1903 he was deputed to aden to study water supply and drainage system he also designed a flood protection system for the city of hyderabad and he was instrumental in designing uh, the sea protection system for visakhapatnam port and then during his service with government of mysore state he was associated in designing and executing many projects such as steel and iron works state bank of mysore to quote a few of them uh, he was awarded the nation's highest award that is bharat ratna in 1955 and uh, i am glad today that we have similar such towering personality amongst us dr vijay joshi who is the recipient of order of australia award first indian to receive this and uh, students will very well appreciate this the second one being sachin tendulkar sir will speak more about this uh, in in his talk so uh, sir is going to guide us on engineering innovations and highways uh, in highways and airports i would uh, like to request my colleague dr aswar sir to uh, introduce our speaker for the audience over to you aswar sir thank you yeah thank you sir um it's indeed my privilege to introduce our speaker a consultant and an eminent indo australian recipient of order of australia medal honorable dr vijay joshi sir dr vijay joshi he is a civil engineering graduate from vijayti doctorate and post doctoral from university of wollongong australia during his post doctoral fellowship he was an advisor to government of japan for optimum utilization of waste in a road construction thus for conservation of natural materials dr vijay joshi is recipient of order of australia medal which is quite similar to our padma bhushan in india for his expertise of using product of steel industry towards the construction of highways and airport his expertise and innovations in the infrastructure field has helped internationally for saving the valuable resource his order of australia medal OAM has recognized him his contribution towards the indian community in australia for pioneering community radio as well as clean up india uh, clean up australia event he is the first indian born to decorate oam in engineering innovations in the year 2012 followed by sachin tendulkar his expertise in a structural design and sustainable road construction spans more than 30 years for more than a decade he has been sharing his knowledge with maharashtra karnataka odisha and jharkhand government the federal chamber of commerce of india and various steel manufacturers such as tata the steel authority of india and zindal steel his skill has been recognized by various honorary ministers of india he is advisor to national highway authority of india nh event delhi which is also volunteering towards the india's better infrastructure development he has been invited as a honorary speaker for various conferences organized by ministry of steel institution, institution of engineers and federal chamber of commerce india he has worked as a sales and technical manager with the australia steel mill services and sw a subsidiary of levy group of companies of usa he is currently engaged by cypress group of uh, one of the largest civil engineering and infrastructure management company in sydney australia um i invite dr vijay joshi to enlighten us with the knowledge and his experience uh, it's over to you sir thank you well, let me start with the saluting our great guru uh vishweshwariya and um, you know i mean in the great guru and there is no other words than that so also Let, let 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 me uh, thank you to Srihangar College of Engineering because on this occasion, you know, which is extremely good uh, occasion, and they have organized this very well. Particularly, our uh, Sri Meshram, Bengali Sahib, our uh, Dr. Aswar, Dr. Lokhande. and professor dr shastri so i must say 
thank you for all your participation now i welcome all the team here and i will be talking about engineering innovations particularly for highways and the uh, airports now my presentation uh, will include the following points i mean first of, the first one is the concept of highway design so i will be specifically mention basic concepts of it what we are learned through it throughout the engineering college as well as in our professional career then once we know the what is the uh, you know um, concept of it then we we'll start about uh, we will discuss about the innovations in principle as well as what are the alternative products for the highways then it's not only the theory i will give the examples worldwide where i moved and where i actually built the highways and of course the last atom is the recognition without that you know like when you write any thesis or any other things you know we always recognize so that that's my the uh, presentation in so should we start with the concept of highway designs so highway designs it's basically loads now you have to have the infrastructure you have to have the highway to resist a load and what are those loads if you see that the number of trucks loading sets the thickness of the highway generally you know it is some sort of a mix around i mean so many vehicles are there you know so the number of cars doesn't make the difference the question is how many heavy vehicles are running on that highway particularly the trucks because the trucks are the damaging and that is why you have to have the sufficient thickness depending upon the how number of trucks to be travel now and in the next 20 years because the highways are designed for the 20 years span so remember the thickness is based on the number of heavy vehicles now number of cars you must account the number of cars also but they are used to design the width of the highway so first one is that truck thickness i mean the number of trucks that sets the thickness while the number of the vehicles because the cars doesn't damage the roads but you have to have six or eight lanes or six lanes depending upon the number of volume of the vehicle so that's the main consideration that the pavement loads are now in the pavement there are two types first is the flexible and if you see that you know in terms of the engineering how they resist the load one is with the through the tensile strength and the second one is the rigid you know in the concrete now i will be discussing uh the development of flexible and rigid combined which is like a combo because in india nowadays you know everything everyone is discussing about the concrete roads concrete roads while in australia uh we prefer the flexible asphalt roads i will come in details for that but these are the basically you know i'm going in the principles of highway design so first is flexible as well as rigid roads now once we say the flexible roads it's typical you know this is the sub base layer base course and surface course which is like either asphalt now how you design this you know based on the primary factors as i mentioned what is the traffic soil characteristics like what is the cvr of the soil what are the weather conditions what construction uh, concept very recycled material cost as i mentioned mentioned before that for the concrete you know your initial cost is very high so all those factors are the primary factors and of course secondary factors are also you know the traffic safety experimental uh, stimulation and what are so these are the main primary factors and the secondary factors 
I just remember that you you guys do not have to write down any of those things. I will be leaving this presentation with the professor, with Professor uh, Dr. Samir Shastri. And uh, any questions with that? Of course, there are slide numbers also are there. So if you shoot me any questions uh, referring any particular slide, I'm more than happy to answer at the end. But this, pre this presentation, you don't need to write it down anything now. You can focus on the presentation and you will be getting this presentation, you know, if you have any particular questions from uh, Dr. Shastri. So coming back to this, this is the payment um, primary factors and secondary factors to design it. Now, this is the typical cross section of the highway in which you can see that this is the uh, top AC layer, few other um, uh, layers and the subgrid. Now, in terms of the highway engineering, the most or road engineering or the airports, the most critical, the most critical is the water. Water is the biggest enemy as far as the highways quality is concerned. So first thing is get rid of the water in principle. Get rid of water. Now water you can get it in the in the pavement section. First is the surface drain, which comes from the top, and the second one is from the soil. Now you can see that the surface drain. Of course, this is the one typical type. There are a number of different types of drains are there, but you must get rid of surface drain. You must know what is the weather. You must know how much how much rain will it's coming, when it will be coming, what is the peak, what's the maximum. So you have to design your drains accordingly. And secondly, subsurface drain you have to have this subsurface drain so that the water in the soil will be collected here and will not be increased in the section and your section will be as it is tight so this is absolute critical water you have to get rid of water now as i just mentioned before i'm just giving you sequence of construction also you know, you can see that the side drains are first built. Side drains to be built first before you lay any road works, before you start anything. First, it is for the side drains, then also pipes for the telephone, electrical cables, what we call the utilities. You must have these first. So any highway construction, the road construction, you must get this ready first. Complete this before you start even the road works. You just cannot do the road works without. In Australia, this is about 40% of the cost is for the side trains to be built, uh, all the telephone, electrical cable, so that in the next 20 years, no one should be able to touch highway for cross connections or any drainage work or any telephone, electric cables, no. You must have those pipes ready. Even this is PVC pipe, you know, you can have the every 20 meters cross, you know, nine inch pipe or 12 inch pipe, you can just place it and PVC pipe is then cheap. Put it in the cross so that whenever, even in two years time, if you wanted to get, uh, uh, from one society to other society, you wanted to lay the pipe of one inch pipeline, you can go through this. You don't need to cut the highway or you don't need to cut the road. Same case here. I'm just giving you sequence of the construction. Just say, let me. Uh, then <clears throat> the next one is how you start in the sequence. The first, you have completed the trains. Secondly, you have to get your source of the product. Today, I have shown you here is a quarry, which is a normal case in India. Uh, get the product, it's ready to go. Load it by the loader. You transport it on the site. Spread it with the optimum moisture contained. And I'm repeating that word. 
spread it with optimum moisture content, and then you compact it with the heavy roller. And that's the sequence of any highway construction. Now, once the top layer is fixed or done, let me tell you about the asphalt, which is the top layer. Because generally in India, the concept is, you know, okay, you know, let's build a concrete road. But that is certainly not the case. If you have proper asphalting, you don't need, you, you don't need this to be done. Just follow the good asphalting, which I'm going to show you now. This is the asphalt plant. The trucks are ready. Through proper, actually controlled mix, through the asphalt plant, you can produce a quality mix of it. From quality mix, it is directly loaded in the truck. So no contamination. Truck transport to the site. There is a vehicle called material transfer vehicle, MTV or called shuttle buggy, through which the mix is again blended to ensure that the mix is homogeneous. This is that MTV. Then from MTV, it goes to the paver. And then with the paver spreading, perfect 50 millimeter, 45 millimeter, whatever the thickness is being specified it. You have a roller, steel roller. You have pneumatic roller. And then the final is the line marking. Now, once you do this asphalting in this sequence, you don't need to build a concrete roads because this is the quality mix you can produce it. Now, so this is all about the principles or concept of highways. Now let's talk about innovations. Use of alternative material, which was considered as a waste. That was my first principle that I was actually looking for the waste materials, you know, is other way around that building the highway is not important. You know, like, okay, where is the waste and how best I can use it for civil engineering application. Generally, so, you know, in most of the engineering uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, natural material is being used. So obviously you have to focus on engineering properties of waste material as well as the natural material. The material, which is the innovative utilization, it's called slag. Let's see what is slag is. So I'm just guiding you to the direction where this is what the slag is the innovative utilization. Now, what is slag? Slag, just let me, let me close this. Okay, still making slag. Slag is a source of steel making. Slag is a source of steel making. Now, when you make a steel, the very first stage is you have to make the iron first. And in the second stage, you make the steel from iron. So remember in the steel making, there are two phases. First phase is the iron making. And the second one is the steel making. Now, what is slag? Now, slag is a co-product of iron and steel production. 
Now I'm using this specific word co-product. It is not a byproduct because by definition or by technical terms, you can reduce the quantity of the byproduct or you may eliminate the byproduct. But in terms of the iron and steel production, you must have slag in the process. And that is why I call slag as a co-product. That means you will have in the process slag. Now, let us see, this is the iron making. Now, where the iron making take place? Iron making take place is in the blast furnace. Now, what is this? So, how you make the iron? Now, iron ore, limestone, and coke are combined, goes higher up, very large furnace, and you heat it with the coal or gas, oil, up to 1500 degrees centigrade. And once this is iron ore, it's melted. Once it melts it down, obviously you get the hot iron. But hot iron, because it is a liquid metal, it will remain at the bottom of it in any flow because it contains the high metal while slag also the part of that flow but because the slag means all the oxides so the specific gravity of the slag it's low compared to hot iron and it floats in the channel then you separated the channel so blast furnace slag is separated and the hot iron is separated now that hot iron contains carbon and we don't need a carbon to be in the steel. So what they do is they get that hot iron, keep that in the big vessel, which is also more 50 ton vessel hot, covered it and then force oxygen is forced there. You can see the oxygen loss is forced. Now, once you have the hot iron with oxygen at 1500 degrees centigrade, chemical reaction takes place, carbon is removed and the steel is made. But during the process also, steel slag is, steel slag is also produced. So remember there is a hot iron slag as well as steel slag. Now that steel slag comes in the pot in the, from the furnace and it is being just tipped. See how hazardous operation is. This is that hot slag, just dumped. Because this is no good. This is no good in the steel making. So when they remove it, what do you, what do, you do? You simply dump it. Now, it's 15 to 20% slag is produced per ton of steel. So imagine now India, as we speak, India produces 100 million tons of steel. So 20 million tons of slag is being produced and is being dumped, just dumped. Our target, in fact, I attended Niti Aayog meeting in India and our target is by 2030 or 25 or 30, you know, it's 300 million tons. So imagine so much slag will be produced and we must find the use of it. Once you dump it here, what we do with that? You can see that it's been air cooled in the pit, the dumping pit, you know. Normally, 
from 1400 degree centigrade to 100 degree, which is a transportable uh, temperature. Um, it takes about 48 to 72 hours. So after this air cooling, big loaders, you know, uh, it is being picked up and you have the big mining trucks, which is 50 ton. In fact, we have in Australia about 100 tons truck because they travel internal within the steel plant. And once the truck goes, you can see the big mountains is big. If you happen to be uh, in the eastern coast, like uh, Jam uh, Jamshedpur, Raurkela, uh, you know, in the West Bengal, uh, you will see these sort of a slag mountains everywhere. In fact, all you guys are from Pune. So there is a place called Jezuri, which is very close to Pune. And there is also small steel plant is there, electric arc furnace is there. You will see that small mountain is being dumped. It's just being dumped. Now, it was the case, same case in Australia also up to 1991. So when I was here in 91 in Australia, you can see the big mountains and my job is to what to do with this. Absolutely challenge, you know, what to do, what to do, what to do with this one. So, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, no one used that. And at that time, there was no Google. There was the only fax machine was available. So no information what's going on around the globe also. So now <clears throat> what to do? A big challenge. At that time, uh, Australia was making 5 million tons of steel. So about one and a half million to 2 million tons of slag was generated every year. Plus, the steel plant was there for 50 years. So those mountains of 2 million tons, 100 million tons of slag lying around in the, around the steel plant. It was a big challenge. Now, as you know, that uh, every, whatever we are using as a new product, generally new products are used against the conventional material. And all the physical properties are based on the chemical composition. So what I did is, I have compared chemical composition of two critical slag. You see that because all this is oxides, SiO2, CaO, MgO, Al2O3. And, and as you know, that basalt, which is a natural material. So I have compared it, why highways are made with the basalt and what the basalt contains. And you can say that SiO2, now like each oxide, you know, all the, our geologists, those who are attending the lecture here, uh, they might support me saying that, say for example, if you have SiO2, what SiO2 does, it gives the strength. If you have MgO, hyper, high MgO, it loses the strength. If you have Fe2O3, it becomes a heavy density product, a denser product. If you have CaO, what happens? Now, see the Portland cement, which has 64% of CaO. Basalt has only the 11%. But with the slag, what after studying two to three years, I mean, a very rigorous study, you know, uh, the 41% is a CaO with the slag in the blast furnace slag as well as in the steel slag. So what I did is simply added water with this parameter called CaO. Now, once you add water, H2O with CaO, what happens? It just forms a concrete. It is just forms a concrete. Now at this stage, it's just easy to say, but to reach this level, it took me almost two to three years in the lab 
to identify what are the things and are they how they are critical where how i can compare it what is the flaw at what will happen and it's a cao in the slag which that property was never ever utilized or being ignored or we never studied it then i said aha let's focus on this cao and see what a best i can do so what i did is done the laboratory experiments with that product observed it whether is there any expansion how good it is what is the density part of it what is the unconfined compressive strength what is the ucs of it then also what i did is i placed the product in front of our office i built a road compacted it with the standard conventional machines no special machines is required for this slag and after one year i obtained the core of it and i core this and then tested in the lab and realized it that it gives me 10 mpa strength after one year without adding any cement because the cement part cao is already there in the aggregates so you don't need a special concrete there anything so that is how coming back to the highway principle initially this was a flexible pavement but over a period of span it becomes a bound pavement so just imagine this this is the some sort of a combo and then utilize while designing i utilize it is elastic property initially but but when you design the poisson's ratio and a few other parameters this product is considered as a bound pavement similar like a concrete similar like a concrete now once this laboratory and field experiment is finished uh because it was my role was a product development engineer i have it established uh this sort of a application and recommended my american company that let's have the crushing plant and produce the aggregates from it then you blend it to make a road based product but then we can supply this concrete agri um this aggregates to the concrete steel slide steel slag which i will come little later on for the asphalt and the combination of blast furnace slag and the granulate slag will get you the road bases so company based on my recommendation invested also in the about 30 million dollars in the crushing plant and we established the concrete uh, to producing the aggregates which is required for the now with this uh sort of a known properties up to 1993 in australia the design was well compacted soil might be 15 cbr or then the higher up might be 30 cbr so in the two layers you know 15 cbr then the top layer is 30 cbr then the sub base natural material base layer natural material so this was the section up to 1993 but knowing the slag property i have introduced and approach to local pwd or uh, what you call in india crri central road institute or nhai cpwd municipal corporations you know i have suggested this innovative design which is same section but this natural materials been replaced by west product of steel making slag so this was a double benefit of it saying natural material saved that's first benefit 
Second benefit is utilization of the waste product. And thirdly, if you see that, this section with the natural material was 450 millimeter thick because this was a flexible pavement with the slag, which is going to be bound pavement in years time, the thickness also reduce it. So not only the material saving, but your entire project, if it is a project to be completed in two years time, you because it is a less volume metric, you can complete in 18 months. So these are the three major advantages of it by using waste product, replacing natural material, and the project management also been in, improved significantly. So this was originally up to 1993 in Australia. And then after 93, after knowing this, uh, the innovative design was submitted. Now, as I mentioned before to you, that there are different type, uh, second type of slag which is available is the steel slag. Now, again, that steel slag is used is in the asphalt or in the asphalt mix, what you call in India, bituminous macadam. So, their aggregates are used there too. And I will come back, you know, a little mixed design, a little later part of it. But the critical portion is the, if you see that misshapen particles, almost they are good. Loss abrasion is also good. There is no plasticity in the aggregates because it is manufactured at the furnace level. Wet strength, dry strength. I mean, it's absolutely steel furnace slag is good material compared to basalt. And particularly PAFP, which is the friction value. Now, if you see that 58 to 61 with the steel slag, while basalt is 48 to 51. Now, you will ask me the question, Ari, the difference is only 10. But the friction is offered in the V square. So imagine steel slag aggregates asphalt produces 100 times better friction compared to basalt aggregate. And this is the critical innovation and see how it is being used in future. Now, this is the typical 14 millimeter mix. When I say 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter is the maximum size of the aggregate in that asphalt mix. If you see that 51% is the coarse aggregate and fine aggregates are 30. So 80% aggregates are totally replaced by steel slag. So another advantage of using this. Now, as I said before, it is a high frictional, it is a rut resistance because it's a heavy. And thirdly, because slag contains lime, CAO, you know, there, the current specifications say that you have to add uh, lime there because to get the bonding between aggregates and bitumen, you don't need that. That CAO is already there. So you have added advantage when you use steel slag in the asphalt mix. Now, this is so called, you know, so far all the uh, first thing is a theory part of it, uh, the principles. Then the second one, I explained what are the innovatives theory. But now I will give you the examples of or various projects where this theory is particularly used in the real world. So it is not something. Uh, 2 plus 2 is 3.99 or 4.01. The research is not like this. The research is uh, actually 2 plus 2 is 5. This is what you can see through the case studies. Back in 1993, this is Sydney airport. Third runway was built. There were two runways were already there. So third runway, uh, they put a tender there in 93. And uh, the entire strip 
of third runway was built by using slag. So this is the first critical and even today. So if you see that in 1993, you know, that was almost 20 years, 30 years back. Now, even today, any work around the, um, around the airport, slag is being nominated. And it's not only the nominated, it's being specified. That means they must use the slag because of the performance of the product. Another example of this uh, North Kayama bypass, which is about 100 kilometers, 150 kilometers south of Sydney. I wanted to show you the specific, I mean, those who are in the authority, you know, those, if you are listening from PWD or uh, any NHI, uh, you see that this is a quarry available next to the road. But local authority has decided to use the recycled material and the recycled material was brought about 40 kilometers from the, uh, from the source rather than using the natural material. So how good people are thinking, you know, in terms of the, the environmental cap and not only the uh, environmental cap, but in terms of the engineering side of it, the road is performing performing very well. You know, this is almost 15 years, uh, the slag was used in the both the layers. And of course, in the asphalt top layer too. This is another project which was built, again, south of Wollongong, uh, where slag was available. And um, uh, except, you know, you, you can see the, these are the projects, you can Google it later on. Uh, this is called Albion Park uh, Highway. Uh, amazing. And just using the product, slag. Now that steel slag. See, this is, you can see on the, uh, this project, you know, it's uh, Sydney to Wollongong. Wollongong is again, you know, 75 kilometers south of highway, which very uh, high mountains, uh, mountain uh, area. So the highways are also, you know, very slopey road, like old Bobby Puna road. You know? So what they use, how to minimize the accidents, how, you know, control the speed. So they use steel slag aggregates in the asphalt, which has produced a very high friction. And obviously with a little bit break on it, you can control it. Uh, this is what the steel slag is being used in the Sydney to Bulangov freeway. This is another example where steel slag aggregates are used in the steep. See the one, you know, it's called Bulai Pass and it's heavily worn to all the driver's guides, steep slope. But at the same time, high, high friction is being produced, so much easy for the drivers and minimize accidents or minimize any fatalities. I'm specifically showing this slide because uh, Standards Australia are the authority of producing the specifications. And what they do is uh, the team, the, uh, they have formed the team for each specification and that team includes academicians like university professors, those who know absolute, you know, all the theory, the theoretical part of it. Then they have the team of the authorities who are governing the bodies like in India, like a PWD municipal corporations. But at the same time, they invite people from industry also. Like me, I work all the time in the contracting firm. So they have invited people from the contracting firm also and explain how the product should go, how the layer should be, whether it should be 200 thick or can we use it 250 thick. And this is what the part, you know, the specifications are derived and they are reviewed every three years and we directly used it. It's not something the research is just 
carrying out for R and D purpose. It is being implemented. Uh, so that is why this sort of a slide was introduced in the presentation. Now, so far, whatever I have explained to you is very much documented uh, by the National Slag Association, I'm, and I'm one of the author, uh, author for that. Uh, how to use the slag in the uh, highways in the asphalt. And they, uh, these books are the guidelines are available on the, you just Google it with the National Slag Association and you will get it, just download it. So basically is not a patent, you know, is not something the confidential information. You will have this sort of information on your tip of there, you know, fingers there. Now, so far it is all about Australia. So for, I'm fortunate enough that in the last 15 years or so, I worked only six weeks in Australia and two weeks or maybe you know one week, one to two weeks, but definitely minimum one week, max two weeks out of Australia with my own consultancy. So I travel internationally and what I do around the globe. In New Zealand, before coming to Australia, I worked with the PWD of New Zealand. And what we did there is the, this is the actual the test track. And if you see that the different type of payment sections are built on which actually main loading is being applied. So in 20 years time, what will be the loading of the material is actually applied within a one year or so, because this is a continuous 365 days, you move it, you move it, then there are plenty of options are there, you introduce the water, so that the real conditions you can simulate, and then it's like a simulation, you know, like aircraft. So this was a build, so I worked there in two years and had opportunity to work there, and uh, whenever I'm, uh, the recommendations which I had not spare, recommended is be accepted by the New Zealand authority and then they change their specification. So this was from New Zealand. Uh, as uh, I was introduced to their awards advisor to government of Japan through Public Works Research Institute there, Ministry of Construction as a, my postdoc fellow there. So I worked there for a couple of years. Uh, uh, again, uh, I used to work in Detroit in USA with our parent company called Edward C. Levy. And uh, this was Chicago to Detroit. Again, steel slag is being used in this one. My job was to be in contracts with the steel companies. So in Bangkok also, in Thailand, we built this road with 100% uh, slag. Of course, being Indian, you will ask me the question, Vijay, what you have done it with India? Say, then let's talk about India now. Because I'm born, brought up there from uh, hometown Thana. So obviously, when I approach these guys with Thana Municipal Corporation, yes, any new product, anyone will say, no, 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 you know, they wanted to cover their backside. So they will not accept a straight away. But Thane Municipal Corporation was quite generous enough and we made some sort of a compromise saying that instead of directly using the concrete, how the slack can be used at the PCC level, you know? And they allowed me to use the PCC level and this is working very well there. I also had an um, opportunity to talk to member of parliament, uh, who's not there, unfortunately, Prakash Paranspe, who allowed me and he asked me, okay, Vijay, show me. So at the place called Murbad near Kalyan, they had given me small strip. I brought this slack from uh, Kalwa, um, special arrangements. We placed a product, used the standard machinery. I took all my PWD, uh, officers there with me. And then on the same road, you see the dates, you know, I started to work in the morning, in the afternoon, the road was ready with proper camber. 
proper camber means all the water should get away from this road and look at this this is what the member of parliament i took him on the slide there um i'm also working for jharkhand government uh with the what they call uh, pant pradhan sadak yojana and um with the jharkhand government allowed me to when i explain them this can be used so this is what the small demo which we used it steel slag aggregates used i built it in tata consulting services office in jamshedpur here i was fortunate enough to got introduced to one of the punekar from who is a managing director of tata steel uh, hemant nerurkar and he was the managing director at that time with the tata steel and when he came to know that he invited me all the way from australia and said vijay show me and this is what and then you won't believe he asked me to continue my consultancy for years and years no i mean this is what you know on the way you meet the number of good people genuine people those who wanted to do something and um, uh mr nirukar was also coep graduate i believe from 72 or 73 batch but he was the managing director of tata steel who actually started this sort of a vision okay let's use it in india again um steel uh, slag aggregates you know when i started producing 20 mm i thought that why i cannot produce it in 65 to 45 mm and i had a fortunate to meet uh, suresh prabhu ji who was at that time the railway minister so i met him in the delhi and i said suresh ji could we try this and he also has the similar vision like in nirukar and he said yes yes we just try this then i went to rdso at, at lucknow uh we done some theoretic you know like a presentations and then rdso permitted me to use this in the small uh like a loco yard there near jamshedpur national highway when our honorable minister gadkari ji he came to know he said vijay show me then i said okay give me the highway you know i mean it's not only the theory and presentation so he allowed me to do the road between the jamshedpur like ranchi to kolkata and jamshedpur was the source of the slag tata steel permitted to use it so this is the actually layout this is the all the compacted soil brought the material spread it like and this is the well compacted surface with the slag in fact crri central road research institute uh, located in delhi has also prepared a report on uh, this one how good the product is of course you know when nitin ji came to know i explained this and i'm glad to share this information for the last 3 4 years i worked as uh, his his departments his advisor in hai national highway authority of india uh, predict uh, mumbai to delhi which is samruddhi marga which i'm working in the gujarat section and there are few other highways which i'm working exclusively on the technical part of it no commercial involvement only how best we can use it is there any any other waste product so i must salute to uh these ministers who also have the similar vision started with uh, nerurkar ji uh, followed uh, uh, followed by uh, you know these uh, these uh, ministers and suresh prabhu uh, uh, nitin ji and also devendra ji fadn ji too now all those advantages of recycled material all those big mountains i have shown to you it becomes like a passion environment list but using the good highways you know building good highways so far in australia 40 million tons of waste product is been used in the last 25 to 30 years so to imagine 
25 to 30 million tons of natural material saved. That's one, that's a fact. And 30 million tons of waste product is being used. So someone recommended me to Australian government and I've been honored there as the, uh, in the, this is the ceremony, uh, Order of Australia. She is our, uh, at that time, like, um, you know, like your Pratibha Patil president of Australia. And um, so this was a ceremony uh, back in 2012. This is that actually the award is. Of course, my family support without my son, my wife, kids, you know, I mean, there is no way, you know, like, uh, uh, without their support, you know, I, I can't stand because I travel six weeks after six weeks, two weeks, somewhere overseas. And then there is a always question, where are you? And then I say, well, no, 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 I'm in Brazil. I'm in Romania and I will be there in weeks time. So all this takes, you know, I mean, support from my family. And of course, this is the very critical that uh, I was the first person to get this order of Australia. But there is no money involved there. It is just, you know, award, you know. Uh, so it was not a big deal. But when Sachin was also offered after me six months, I was honored by invitation by the Prime Minister of Australia saying that, Dr. Vijay, could you please come down and attend this event, which was an exclusive event that we wanted to offer uh, Order of Australia. Like whatever your contribution in the highway making, it is a similar contributions of Sachin in the Tendulkar, uh, Tendulkar's uh, contribution. So I was absolutely thrilled, you know. I mean, spending time with the, uh, Tendulkar, what else you want, you know? I mean, mujhe mila to kuch nahi ya. Lekin Tendulkar ke saath mein do ghanta tha and I was the main person there, you know? What else you want, you know? It's amazing, amazing. Of course, all those things, you know, I mean, I must acknowledge whatever my career is, is uh, because of the limited space and time, um, uh, I cannot, uh, you know, get all their names, but these are the representatives. First thing is my parents, uh, my mother who is 93 now in India. Uh, unfortunately, my father is not there, but without that, my parents, I will not be here. My high, my high school buddies are there too. Uh, and Sadanan, Raju Kelkar, Shirish, she's my good friend. My engineering buddies, Shri Joshi and Rajan Tiffany's. Uh, these are the, my professor, my Richard RNH, he was my PhD supervisor. Uh, I must say at this stage that uh, I did a diploma first from Vijaya and I, too, I stood first uh, in diploma. And then I wanted to do my BE. But at that time, there was no reserve seats or there was no proper channel to, to go, go to, to to do the degree course. So one of my professor, late professor V.V. Deshpande, who took me to V.N. Gupchup, you know, and Gupchup sir said, okay, Vijay, I will fight for you. And you won't believe that one seat was created for me because I just stood in diploma first there in Maharashtra because there was no admission COEP, there was nothing in Valchand group because there was no channel. So these sort of people, you know, help my, my career. Of course, the next one, I must say that, I mean, to, if you wanted to get your job done, uh, you know, when you are a school kid or when you are college and you wanted to do something, what do you do? You go to the, your father's friends, you know, and then you tell them casually, hey, Kesho Kaka, hey, please, 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 you know. And these are the, my uncles, you know, I mean, those who are absolutely influential with my father, who said, Are, let him go, let him go to US, let him go to it, you know, let him go to Australia, it doesn't make any difference. These are the, my, what you call the well wishers. My manager so far in various companies, Shai Smith, 
she's amazing manager amazing i i can talk on my manager a special half an hour uh, that in fact i do teach in the xlro management uh, lectures in jamshedpur and during that lecture i do explain the difference between indian management style as well as the western management and i put examples of shani smith who was my manager and currently my manager is rocky you know then of course brian pitwebski who is a canadian guy but used to work in new zealand and he was my boss in pwd and of course there was a gentleman called dsop so there is i mean the list just goes on and goes goes on and the last one is my next australian friends greg uh, mark smith and um, because from india without these guys you know i cannot stand here you know i mean uh, it is because of all my these people i'm here and that's about it all from my end any questions and i will now stop the sharing yes before we go to the questions uh, part sir i would like the participants although you are in muted mode many of you but those who can unmute themselves we will have a big round of applause for joshi sir for such a wonderful lecture thank you so much sir and then over to you aswar sir for questions i can see some questions in the chat box even i have received couple of questions on my whatsapp so yeah yes sir yes sir uh, sir we got a tremendous response from youtube also uh, we got some questions in a chat box there so one of the question is that uh, uh, is there any any sort of adverse reaction between the bitumen and uh, uh, say uh, because of composition of that slag uh, whether you got some chemical reaction or leaching out of any chemicals on a long term uh, performance during the long term no, performance no no not at all not at all in fact this is i'm i'm glad this is a very good question it's always ask any recycle material you know they said are leaching are leaching c number 1 slag is a self cementitious property one secondly your leaching test is carried out on the individual particles stressed and not on the bound action and number 3 it is be used in the asphalt which is absolutely bound pavement if it is in the leaching conditions can you imagine it is being used for sydney airport right away in the ocean you know it is going on and environmental conditions are more stringent here in australia and is not only used at a ek dafa matka lag gaya aise nahi hai wo jab product is being used in the last 25 years 20 years it being nominated and is not only in australia it is being used in thailand it is now used in jamshedpur and over the over the part of the last 20 years there is a history there so the statistical information says that the product is good i'm more than happy if someone has the any specific questions on the leaching shoot me but this is my my answer to that question yes yeah uh, that's what next question yeah, yeah. yes sir uh, sir lot of uh, things you are already told about uh, these uh, slags actually so what is the future scope uh, in this particular uh, area that is one question from the participant sorry come back again uh what is the future scope uh, of uh, working in this particular area particularly in, in india i think uh, i have received also this is that message so what is the use of i mean what is the scope for use of steel slag or any other thing in india i mean where like you where do you see uh, indian engineers using slag for road construction okay So, uh, let me start saying that uh, our honorable minister nitin ji gadkari has already taken this at a very serious issue and he in his in fact two days before he is uh, specific he referred me there to uh, from west to wealth that is what his principles are and and in the last 3 years uh, 
Federal Chamber of Commerce, Central Road Research Institute, and NHI have combinedly done number of presentations, including Ministry of Steel, and the ball has already started rolling. Specifications, particularly for the slag utilization, is already been abandoned. Now the question is, in, in terms of the process side of it, how you do it process? Uh, I must say that even though the question is not yet, I will say that mostly because the slag is carried, uh, the source is at the steel plant, generally our observation is about 100 kilometers is the ideal transport. Out of 100 kilometers, it may not be commercially viable. But the other side of the coin is if it is commercially viable within the 100 kilometers, why we cannot use the road with using slag within that 100 kilometers? How come the within that 100 kilometers, the other natural materials is being used? So, nutshell, yes, ball has already started rolling. Yeah. But, and because the Indian government is also very serious about it, it's just because as we speak, we are producing 100 million tons. So 20 million tons of slack. But in 10 years time, our target is 300 million. So imagine how much slack will be generated. So I was advisor to Tata Steel back in what, 2011, 12, uh, and continuously then with the Jindal Steel. Um, they are also you know, serious about it. You know? and also the government too. And I'm formally advisor to NHR, National Highway of Authority. And every time I get the opportunity, um, uh, I specify that. In fact, in near Gujarat, that Mumbai to um, Delhi, that's uh, Samruddhi Marga, sorry. You know, that Samruddhi Marga, where it's passing through the Gujarat section, SR steel is supplying slag there. So whenever we get opportunity, it's being used. I'm also talking to that Palki Marga, which is passing through the Jejuri from Pune to uh, Pandapur. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that is also being discussed as we speak. So it's not something new product. Majority of the, uh, what they call the ball it started rolling. More, I'm doing this sort of a presentation for the last 20, uh, 15 years you know, in India too. Now, with all the big authorities, Karnataka government, institution of engineers, Maharashtra government, Jharkhand stud, um, FIKI, Chamber of Commerce, Maharashtra, Federal Chamber of Commerce in Delhi. Um, so, drum has already started building. Yes. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir, this is one general question, actually. What will be your advice uh, to the budding engineers uh, on the occasion of this particular engineers day to day? Uh, how you want to uh, that our graduates should shape for the future requirement? Uh, difficult one because uh, 30, 30 years back uh, or 40 years back, sorry, I graduated in 78. I was the same case, you know, like uh, these students, you know, came out of this uh, uni, you know, and um, uh, now just knows that okay GT market pass ho gaya. Abhi aage kya you know? so obviously initially you, you initially you go for changes better opportunities but uh, go for challenges I'll say that you know I'll, uh, probably you are not uh, you know I, I will say that when I was in this research work, my employer, American company said, hey, we do not want your PAD. Because if you do your PAD, I'm not going to give you the extra money. You still wanted to do it? Then I said, yes, go for it. I will go for it. Now, without money, who will work for three years extra PAD? You tell me. End of the day, end of the day, I was invited by the Japanese, Japanese government saying, that, okay, come, come down. So there is, is always a light at the end of the tunnel, always. And you will see that. 
So go for the challenges, you know. Yes, money you required it, obviously. But sometimes uh, it's not money, money all the time. You go for those challenges, assuming that you will see that light. And at least, you know, I can share that experience. You know, I mean, I went for it, you know, saying that. And you won't believe I was doing it to fire my full-time job. Then five to eight, as you know, here in the evening, no one, uh, so you have to make your own roti sabji with the family, you know, clean utensils. And at 9 30, 10 o'clock, I used to go to the university to do my PAD and come back home at three o'clock in the morning, knowing that I will not get extra money off of my PAD. And that continued for three years. You know, I was sleeping only for four hours, three hours, you know, three years continuously. But you develop that sort of a passion, you know, you develop that challenge, you know. And um, yes, it's been well taken. And you won't believe, you know, later on, it's become an expert, you know. Like um, people, you get a phone call from Romania, you know. Hey, doctor, could you please come from South Korea, wherever the, you know, I mean, I travel a lot around the globe every six weeks. Um, and um, so... End of the day, it pays off. But when you feel it at that time, go for those challenges. Not only the money. Yes, you require the money, but after a certain stage, go for those challenges. And I mean, we have been given a many, you know, example. Today, you guys have organized it on this occasion of uh, such a guru, you know. I mean, our engineers, they, what else you want? You know, he has also faced so much challenges, you know. And we are just following its steps. We are not doing something uh, extra for it. Extra. Yes, uh, so, uh, that's all from my side, uh, questions actually. Uh, it's uh, over to Shastri, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, I can see a couple of questions uh, from the live audience, Mr. Nisar Jamadar. Mr. Nisar, you can ask your question. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I, I'm, you know, very, very. I can say proud to be a part of this forum where you got so many learner people and especially Joshi sir. Uh, I'm very much inspired. Actually, I am also a 55 year old student. I'm doing my second year ME from uh, Trinity College of Academy, uh, Academy of Engineering. So my question to Vijay sir is uh, this uh, using slack in uh, the pavement for runways might uh, there might be a lot of challenges given that there is a lot of specification restrictions on the use of uh, I mean, friction value so how do we address this if you want to use this on the pavement in runway sir okay now in this particularly at at the time of 90 in 92 93 94 when slag was dump product um i went for the very high jump instead of building the small uh, you know, approaching to the council and the highway, I went directly to the Sydney Airport Corporation. And what I did is, whatever I was doing, you know, the research work, you know, this is another uh, point to be considered when we do the research work, is whatever I had designed, laboratory test and actually field test, all those designs are first approved by my potential customers. So it's not just two plus two, whether I can get it answer or no. It's 3.99 or 4.01, not interested. What I was interested is, is it what my customer, is it what my potential customers is looking for? So for example, I have prepared number of parameters identified by this slide. But Sydney Airport Corporation said with it, what is today's unconfined compressive strength in seven days' time? Now, in seven days' time, the even slag was not holding it properly. So the, it was zero value. So I was thrown out of the you know their office one day, you know. But after three months, I said, like, okay. So I went back to the uh, my potential uh, client, you know, saying that okay, after three months, I'm getting MPA. After six months, I went there, I'm getting a four MPA, six MPA. So I know what my customer or my, my uh, you know, client, 
or my customer is expecting from my material and my experiments are designed accordingly. So I was answering their questions as in the line of process. Secondly, their critical portion was in terms of the dynamics, you know, saying that, you know, at that time, uh, the biggest aircraft was 747. So what I did is uh, that same tire configuration, because the critical is tire configuration, as you know, Jamadar Saab. So I created 747 same tire configuration with 400 PSI, with the tire pressure. And I brought a load, you know, like a 10 ton loads on the trailer and, you know, made 400 ton and run on that slide and then measured it how much it was decomposed from its natural. And it was within the uh, degradation of within the limit of the specification. So that is how the, yes, initially, initial acceptance level is very tough. I mean, any new product, you know, you use it. In the same case, even at our home also, you know, I mean, now Ganpati Din, I can uh, quote that, you know, I'm like, uh, whatever mother your uh, I makes it, your wife cannot make it. Yeah, it is that simple. But over a period of time, she also makes it as good as your eye. So, it is, you know, it is um, the new product, the new product initially reluctance, but you go with the engineering properties, all the answers with them, get them also involved in the research. Not that one fine morning you go there saying that this is what my PAD is. Then there will be a reluctance that they said, ah, you have not tested this parameter. You have not done this. You have not done this. There will be a list. Instead of that list, you get that list well before your R&D starts. And that is how I did it with Sydney Airport Corporation. Uh, sir, if our, there are no any further questions, I think uh, we can uh, uh, move to the further portion of this particular event, uh, and that is a uh, uh, vote of thanks. So, shall we go for the vote of thanks? Yes, yes, please. So, I request my colleague, Dr. Busari, uh, to do the honor. Busari, madam, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. A uh, very good evening to all. Uh, on behalf of uh, Srinagar College of Engineering, Pune, I am here to propose the vote of thanks. I really, from my total heartedly, I just thank Dr. Vijay Joshi, who is an eminent Indo-Australian consultant, for giving such an informative lecture on the engineering innovations for highway and airport, transforming actually the current trend in the ro total road construction. Sir, your contribution in this field of transportation and related with environment engineering is really appreciable. You really have set an example as to how to use in an optimum way the materials and the best product uh, leading to saving our valuable natural resources. And in doing so, still maintaining the quality matching with the international standards. Really, sir, it was very much, we say, uh, we were... Uh, very much privileged to have you over here for uh, Siangad College of Engineering in this lecture series. Uh, we are very much thankful to Professor M. N. Navle, Founder President, STA Society, Pune, Dr. Mrs. Sunanda M. Navle, Founder, uh, Founder Secretary, Mrs. Rachna Navle Ashtekar, Vice President Admin, and Mr. Rohit M. Navle, Vice President HR, who are always there for encouraging us and promoting us to organize such programs. I would uh, also thank Dr. S.D. Lokhande, Principal, Siyagad College of Engineering, Pune, Dr. Y.P. Reddy, Vice Principal, Siyagad College of Engineering, and yes, Madam, so how is it? As a shan, grateful to all the participants here who have enthusiastically attended this program on the Zoom as well as on the YouTube live, it is going on, and uh, who have made this program a really a success. I once again thank everyone who has been involved directly or indirectly in making this program successful. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Over uh, to you. you. Uh, yeah, before thank giving, you so uh, I will request all the participants and everybody there to uh, be on a video so that we can yeah. capture some. Uh, uh, Beautiful yeah. moments with all, all of you.
Yes. Yeah, sure. Request to all participants to please start your videos and request to Dr. Swami sir to take the screenshots uh, for all the participants frame by frame. Uh, participants, please uh, start your videos. Please put your videos on. It will, it will be a good memory, as sir has said. Uh, uh, Swami sir, just let us know once you are through with the uh, all the all, all the screens. Yes, sir. I cannot see. Uh, I think you have to go to the many. next frame. Yes, sir. Only few I can see. Yeah. So participants, please uh, switch, uh, put, switch, put on your videos so that we can see your beautiful smiling faces on the uh, environment uh, engineers day uh, occasion. Then now, and he kara lagel. Ha yes. Monica madam, today na unmute ani video chalu kara hai option dal. Yes sir. Yeah. yeah. Please make the videos uh, make them able videos able. Now please check uh, participants. Is it is it uh, now possible to put on the videos or not? Yet? No, yes, sir. No. no, sir. So we can uh, switch on your our mics, but we cannot start our video. Monica, madam, video. can you just check it once? Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, no. Uh, setting for the kelela hai, but I don't know why they are not able to do. Just give me a moment. Just give it, give us a minute, if possible. Otherwise, uh, yeah, Swami sir, you can take the oh, yeah. Yeah. with the names of parties. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would request all of you, please, uh, don't you mute, uh, please mute yourself from wherever the Participants, volume. please mute yourself. We will just try for the video. Can you mute your Lala? Sir, maybe while uh, scheduling a meeting, option for their camera is not given there. So okay, I, okay. I'm also not able to do their videos. Or... Okay, okay. No, no, no okay, issue. We'll no issue. We will have the screenshot of the names only. Hmm? Yes. So sorry for the inconvenience, participants, but we will have your names. And uh, Meshram, sir, you want to make any announcement? Uh, regarding feedback, yes. Sir. Yes, yes. Uh, feedback link is already shared in the chat box and also it will be made available on the WhatsApp group. So all the participants, they are requested to uh, please go through the feedback and uh, definitely they will be receiving the certification, uh, certificate of participation once they have completed with the feedback procedure. Okay. So... Uh... Thank you so much, sir. With your permission, uh, can we end this meeting? So, sir, I just wanted to say thank you again for inviting me. Uh, yes, again, uh, if you have any questions, because sometimes you may not have the prayer questions now, but yeah. uh, to all, you may send your questions to uh, Dr. Samirji Shastri. Yes. And um, then through the emails, I will try to answer that. Uh, Definitely, once, sir. The once the lockdown is over, uh, yes. in three, four months' time, I will be coming down to Pune and I'll certainly yes. see you guys one to one. Definitely, sir. Definitely. Yeah. We are also eager to meet you in person, not just virtual meeting. Yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
in fact meanwhile we we'll just continue any communication if you are organizing any other lectures also like this let yes, me know sir. so i can also join you know like yes, audience yes sir definitely sir definitely sure. yes okay thank you again thank you so much sir on behalf of the department thank i you, once sir. again thank you so much thank you thank you sir yes thank you sir uh, आस्वर सर कि मोनिका मैडम पहले रेकॉर्डिंग बंद करा एक मग मीटिंग एंड करा पार्टिसिपेंट्स थैंक यू सो मच मे बी वी वर नॉट एबल टू टेक द फोटोग्राफ बट युअर नेम्स आर देयर विथ अस एज स्क्रीनशॉट्स यस सर थैंक यू रेकॉर्डिंग बंद कर आधी मग मीटिंग एंड करा यस सर यस सर